Mm, that's drunk. Super Nintendo had a ton of great Disney games, whether they were based on movies like Aladdin or TV shows like Goof Troop, or just regular old character-based games like Mickey's Magical Quest, or in some cases, characters based on characters playing another character like Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow. The Sega Genesis had their fair share of good Disney games too, like World of Illusion and Gargoyles. The thing is though, many of these games all had kind of a similar feel. They all did a good job representing their source material, and the gameplay was fairly straightforward and the games were usually beatable. Disney games obviously didn't suddenly stop being made after the 16-bit era, but it's still jarring to see a game like Disney's Lilo and Stitch for Game Boy Advance because it's so different than what I've come to expect from older Disney games. Don't get me wrong, this game is super fun. It's just a kid's movie turned into a metal slug clone? What? And this game is really freaking tough, too. Bear in mind, this is not to be confused with the Lilo and Stitch PlayStation games. This game and its sequel on Game Boy Advance are their own thing. But yeah, you play a Stitch and run to the right and shoot everything that moves while powering up your weapon and chucking pineapple grenades with the R button. Well, that's the first level anyway. The next level has you playing as Lilo, where you sneak around a spaceship using brilliant disguises like this to avoid being seen by any enemies. You can attack, but uh, it's not recommended. After that, you switch back to playing as Stitch, this time in kind of a rail shooter mode. Then you're back as Stitch the same as the first level, only this time you're riding a tank. That's sweet! The game goes back and forth like that for a total of seven levels, and holy crap this game is hard, especially some of the boss fights. Overall, it's not a very long playthrough, but the difficulty is what makes this one seem much longer than it is. It's strange how Lilo and Stitch is clearly a kid's movie, and this game is definitely geared toward kids because collecting certain items enables you to unlock these really impressive movies that you access from the main menu. Seriously, look at these, it's just insane. So it's kind of weird to me how tough this game is. Making the game even tougher is that while playing as Stitch, you can't shoot while crawling or crouching, so that's a major bummer. There's also a password system here instead of a battery save, which some people may not like. But other than those flaws, this is a pretty cool game. The run and gun levels are a lot of fun, and the Lilo levels may seem boring by comparison, but they're actually pretty well done, with the later level using a gravity flipping mechanic. I will say though, the rail shooter stages are kind of a downer. This game spawned a sequel, Disney's Lilo and Stitch 2, Hamsterveil Havoc, and it makes a ton of improvements on the first game, introducing a double jump, more weapon power-ups, and a battery save. Also, this game is way more kid-friendly. There's fewer enemies, and it only takes a couple shots to bring them down. There's also weird stuff here like these coffee cups that slow down everything around you for a brief period of time. The rail shooter stages are made much more fun since you're driving a jeep around instead. The game eventually does present a bit of a challenge, but it's nowhere near the first game. So yeah, did you ever want to play a Disney version of Metal Slug? Then check out Lilo and Stitch for Game Boy Advance. It's a surprisingly tough and gritty playthrough with a lot of gameplay variety. Some of it works and some of it doesn't, but it's definitely a game worth checking out that I don't see many people talk about. The sequel is also a good time, although bear in mind that one was made with younger kids in mind. I'm not sure why the first one wasn't, but for what it is, it's pretty good. And I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.